it's like a little pill, but not a pill. Um, it's a practice. So it's a little practice that you do. And it just, it, to me, it's a, the most rest. It's like the most power nap you could ever get. This tool helps me find moments of peace because I don't have a whole lot of time that extend my day so I can live like full, my fullest capacity. Like it gives me two days in one day. It just gives me this power. It's been around for a while, but I mean, I think on a widespread level, it's being picked up by everybody now. It's being understood as something more than some kind of religious nutty thing. It's a, it's a, it's a system of uh, teaching yourself how to get into a state of relaxation that, that affects your entire life. It's not just finding quiet, it's finding bliss. And that is natural, that is for everybody. You see it in babies, you don't have to teach it to them. We somehow forget. It's a different experience every time, but I get glimpses of something that energizes me on such a deep level uh, that I now, I'm not sure exactly what I do without that form of prayer. It's a way to be in touch with who I really am. Can you meditate? It helps me because it, it, it puts me in, in in a conscious space, because I, like before I actually do it, I you know I keep reminding myself. I ask myself, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? It's just a reminder that underneath all our comings and goings, our successes and our failures, you know, there is a deeper dimension to our lives, and we can tap into it and show up from that place, which is wiser and more joyful and more compassionate. As soon as you try to do this, your mind's going to go bonkers. You're going to start thinking about, you know, what's for lunch, do I need a haircut, where do gerbils run wild, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You're just going to notice, oh, I'm, I'm, my mind's going crazy right now. But that noticing is the key moment, is in fact the victory. It's interesting because this is when most people think they've failed, that the kid, oh, I can't meditate because I can't clear my mind. This is the, the biggest misconception about meditation. You do not need to clear your mind. That's impossible unless you're enlightened or dead. Uh, the whole goal is just to notice when you become distracted and start again. You return your attention to your breath mm. and you just do that a million times. <laughs> and every time you catch yourself wondering and go back to your breath, it's a bicep curl for your brain. It changes your brain. To have that tool now and to be able to go inside to the deepest part of myself and to access that and to recharge my battery internally within myself, I feel so badass. I was personally not in a good, good place. I think, you know, just overdoing it in the 60s. So I was just not very sort of centered and I was looking for something. I think we all were. I was, I was very impressed by the people that I I learned that they did TM and I was like, well, they're interesting people and it, it, there must be something to it. And I thought, I'll try this even though I'm not good at meditating. It is the only time I have that stillness. It's the only way I've ever been able to sit long enough that I, I open my eyes and I'm sad that it's 20 minutes later. I'll tell you my greatest regret. I didn't know the importance of that morning TM in those days. Wow. If I had two TMs, I'd still be doing the show now. Right. I did not have the energy. I was exhausted. Sometimes you Painfully think... exhausted all the time. If I don't do it, I feel like I'm constantly chasing the day. As opposed to being able to be controlled and dictate the day. Not that you're you know, calling the shots on what comes forward. But the fact that I am set and ready for whatever may come my way. You know, I have a calmness about whatever comes my way and a poise. Um, and that comes from starting the morning off with meditation. It's like a kickstart for your day. Mm -hmm. It just centers you and things, your stress levels are just down and you find yourself interacting in the world much easier and better and um, in, in a calmer way. And there's just a, a peaceful joy that, that sort of comes over. You know, as much as we pump iron and we run to build our strength up, we need to build our mental strength up. I am a big proponent of meditation and for radio I feel it added tremendous creativity and having that morning and afternoon, in fact to this day after I do the radio show, my head is pounding so bad from the yeah. headphones and, and the loud noise and five hours of headphones and talking, I mean it's exhausting. Right. I go and I meditate and I walk out and I have the whole rest of my day and it's, I'm a new person. I, know. I don't, I don't yeah. think I could really live without it. I wanted to learn about transcendental meditation due to my dissatisfaction with some of the pleasures that I talked about. Drugs, the fame, the celebrity, the consumerism, the wealth, all of these things that pledge happiness but deliver so little of substance. And uh, in learning about transcendental meditation, 
I found very quickly access to a, a deeper state of happiness, which is very uh, profound. Meditation promotes gratefulness. You want to be grateful. You want to operate from a grateful space. It allows you to, you know, the person who is grateful is really attractive. It allows you to be a good, good giver. And again, good givers are great getters. I think that kids are growing up in a world that's full of stress. It's full of anxiety everywhere. There's this pressure to succeed. There's this uh, over emphasis on, on um, things on the outside. There's a de-emphasis on the things on the inside. And kids employ, it's a difficult place to grow up. This world, you can give every kid happiness when you give them meditation. The moments when they realize they have everything you have. Give them that gift. It's very, very important. The greatest gift you can give is consciousness. So please, 